The folks here call it nerd creativity, and it's all over the place. So there's gonna be lots of fun stories for us to tell, including the folks who create costumes and dress up as pop culture characters. They're everywhere. Maybe that's why something just doesn't feel right. I think I need some help. So we <laughs> turn to superstar cosplayer Amanda Fellner. What if? So what is cosplay? Cosplay, uh, the word itself comes from two words. It's costume play, and that's really when it all boils down to it. That's that's the point. It's it's dressing up in a costume to have fun. I guess I've always been into costumes. Halloween was my favorite holiday, of course, as a child, and it was for the costume component. I didn't really care that much about the candy, <laughs> and that's still true, actually. Amanda's definitely got a thing about collecting nerdy pop culture stuff. As you can see, I do, no, no, no. I do I think enjoy you, collecting I, some things. <laughs> you've got, there's like a tiny little bit of shelf space, I think, up above. Uh, yeah, yeah there I, I still could. have some space. Yeah. She also has a theater degree, has done professional costume design, and works at a craft store running quilt machines, a perfect fit for cosplay. She likes translating animated characters into real life, but has created a wide range of costumes and won best in show a few times since she got started. So in 12 years, any guess how many different characters you've created for yourself? It's actually probably around 40 at this point. So what's the hardest one you've ever had to do? Oh man, a uh, character from the, the cartoon Gargoyles. Now, her name's Demona and she is a gargoyle. So she has wings and she has a tail and she has, they're not quite stilts, but they're like elevated platform shoe things that I had to build. So she had a lot of components that were pretty challenging. Now she faces her greatest challenge, okay. me. I think it'll work. Okay, so we already talked about what I'm gonna be, how do we get there? All right, so I think we need to do a little bit of work. What do we do with the hair? Just came out of a package. We. Need <laughs> Need to trim it down a little. And this is kind of rare. Most of the time you're making your own stuff. Yeah, usually. Or with wigs, I, uh, I often have to purchase one and modify mm -hmm. it to the right thing because I'm usually doing some sort of strange cartoon. Mm -hmm. This is like a strange cartoon. <laughs> and this will hold me for a few days? Yeah, you, okay. you should be pretty good. First step. Mustache. I just want to see what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's really not bad, actually. My hair used to be this color. What's that doing? So that's trimming down the actual hair part of this mm -hmm. middle piece uh, without just giving it a straight cut. Can I try it for a second? Sure. You're a lot faster at this <laughs> than I I do have uh, practice. Yeah. Is the detail part the fun part? It can be, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> or. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, ah. Uh, <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> why do I care this much about this little piece, yeah. but. That's just me. Am I gonna be able to eat with this thing on? It's just a little, little bit that we did, but it's a lot more realistic. Am I ready? Yes, I think you're ready. Here we go. So I think. <laughs> I think you look great. <laughs> well, thank you so much for help. Of course, of We're course. Off. We are. Yep, I've become Ron Burgundy from the movie Anchorman. Mike, you have a story to tell. Are you sure? Do it. It's a story you were born to tell. We see what we want to see. Most people live a fantasy. Dark dreams, stark reality. Money, clothes, women, cars. All the things that make you a star. Insecurity and ego too far. I'm pretty sure you don't even know who you are. Now, Ron Burgundy and team are off in search of creators. Hello, Casper. Hi. Can I talk to you for Channel 4 News? Of course. <laughs> I'm an artist, and, and I do comics, merchandise, concept art, freelance, stuff like that. I've been um, a drawing since I was two, so it's been a long time. And I know I also love anime, um, video games, coffee, cats, <laughs> all kinds of stuff, so. Tell me about like one of these. One of these your favorite? <laughs> I think out of these, I like that one the best because he's um, the villain of mm -hmm. the series, so he's a lot of fun to draw. And 
kind of dark and ominous. Yeah. And a little, yeah, there's a lot going on yeah. back there, so. Which I tend to like. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of a big deal. A big deal? Well, I'd say about a medium-sized deal, but, uh... What are you working on now? This is from Metroid Zero Mission. From Which the, is? From the Game Boy Advance. It's a okay. Metroid action-adventure game. It's a remake of the original Metroid from the early, from the mid-80s. Okay. And uh, it's one of my favorite games of all time. I love the Metroid games. The idea is that I am effectively recreating the look and the aesthetic of pixel art from classic video games. I'm of the age where, I mean, most of my childhood was effectively defined by this stuff. I ended up working with computers for a living, uh, working with data for a living, and I largely thank my career today due to the fact that I've just always had an interest in technology, and that is largely due to the fact that I was exposed to video games at a very young age. So how did you get started creating paintings with this old school retro video game look. Great question. It's hard to, I don't even really have a good answer for that. I don't have any artistic background. Talk about the process. The process is I take a T-square and I grid the entire thing out in pencil. I go with quarter inch pixels. It's just a, a unit of measurement that I'm comfortable with. So I grid it out, grid it out like a graph paper. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of peel it apart color by color. I'm making sort of a mustardy yellow. I tend to try to invent these things in the fly, like, oh, this is boring mustard, so it's BM. And I'll just come in here, give it a label in there, and if I need to figure out where that color goes, I can just hide or show the layer and keep it kind of selected. And as I peel them apart, I can see what's left and see what I haven't gotten to yet. You know, you look at it here, it doesn't look like anything. You zoom out, you squint a little bit. You got it. It's funny, because I'm, I'm this far away from it when I'm working on it, and right. it just looks like nothing right and then i stand up when i'm done and i take a look at it and it's like okay what i do is a little bit off the beaten path and most people haven't seen it before so i get a chance to talk to people about it which is cool <laughs> how's it going look like ron burgundy man that's awesome <laughs> I work in marketing during the day, so this is a side gig. Definitely hit quite a few events a year. But yeah, I just do it uh, when the kids go to sleep. Talk about your stuff. Each of these is made from about four to 10 layers of the cut paper, um, and they're stacked. So there's some shading that's gonna occur in the dark. They have a different look to them. That's kind of one of the things I like about them is there's really two looks to them, one in the daylight and then one in a darker environment, so. Yeah. Do you have a background in origami or light boxes or any of this kind of stuff? No, no, not really. I have kind of a fascination with uh, lamps and lights and things like that, so it kind of worked out. I definitely enjoy like, you know, nerdy stuff, so uh, that's where I, where I like to make also animals, some scenic stuff, but really, yeah, I gravitate towards nerdier stuff. It's just, just kind of my wheelhouse. Like so, what? You know, superheroes, that type of thing. This is actually the first one I made. For oh, my that's the one you made for yeah, your daughter. Yeah, for my daughter. Okay. So that's uh, it's pretty simple, but just enjoy that because of the, the memories that, you know, her enjoying it. The Star Wars one back there looks pretty complicated. Yeah, it's pretty intense. A lot of this is, uh, yeah. actually that owl there, um, that's a lot of hand cutting. That, that one took a lot of work, but I enjoyed the design of that one because it has a couple layers to it, so. Best costume you've seen so far? I don't even know what it was. It was like an Egyptian uh, kind of look to it, like bejeweled. It was it was awesome. Not Ron Burgundy. Oh, uh, actually, you were leading me. You were leading me. Yeah, I should <laughs> I should have known. But do you smell like rich mahogany? I immediately regret this decision. Oh. Do you want to talk to Channel Four News, San Diego? <laughs> I've been tatting for 13 years, and uh, that's my thing that I do. <laughs> so how'd you get started doing this? I saw a pair of barefoot sandals on Etsy that I fell in love with, but I couldn't afford. Now I know why. <laughs> because of that, I went to my local library, and they had a book there that came with a DVD. Even with that, it took me a week just to do my first successful stitch, but I stuck with it. And this is kind of an old school form of art, right? It this dates back to when? Victorian era. That's why I started working with the cameos, just because they were the same era. And then I kind of expanded slowly into, uh, I am a horror movie fan, mm -hmm. so I 
found more horror-related cameos, images, things like that. My favorite piece is this one. So this one I actually designed. I think this one has like 10,000 knots in it, maybe? 10,000? Yeah, knots. And so this is a really complicated piece. It takes two shuttles instead of just one. What's a shuttle? Um, so this is a shuttle. And actually, I'll give you guys a short little demo here. Okay. Could I try that? With you want the... to try tatting? Yeah. And okay. then go around and wrap it around and your here, pinky. And then really tight here. Yeah. Okay. So hold it like this, yep. flip it over, and I wrap. So just wrap it, so just so it goes around like your this. hand. Yeah. Bring the tension back up on, on your th thread so that it's tight. This? Yeah. And you'll go over top of this green thread. Okay. Put the back of the shuttle underneath. So close your hand up. Okay. And we're going to pull. And now you can open your hand back up. And I made a... And there you go. You made a knot. That's one knot. That's one knot. Out of probably uh, another 1,000 I need to make. So could I tat a new mustache? Because this mustache is... So there is actually a tatter yeah. who makes mustaches that you what? can stick on. <laughs> yeah. Anything that you see on my table is something that I love. What I tell people is that's how I feed my inner magpie. I'm able to go, oh, I like this, I like this, I like this, and then throw, send it out to the world. You're so wise, like a miniature Buddha with hair. He's in cosplay, I love it. Uh, how's it going? Good. And these are blowing up right now on my Etsy because it's really close to Shark Week. Uh huh. Music was what I'm trained in. I taught music for a while. Now I've, I split my time between uh, teaching music privately and uh, this sculpting that I do. I got into sculpting because I, I just saw one of those videos that pop up on Facebook and it was like a demo, someone um, making something out of polymer clay. And it's just like, I really like doing this and just kind of kept, kept doing it. And so I'm a big fan of Japanese anime. So I love when I get to do anime things. And my favorite things to make are these little chibi figures. And chibi means like cute. So they have like really big heads, big googly eyes. These are hermit crab ragoons. So this, oh. this is my own design. <laughs> that is. And I airbrushed. Yeah, so I airbrushed the ragoon to try and look like like it's fried. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I'm working on keeping my mustache on. It's yeah. a struggle. <laughs> Definitely a struggle. Stay classy. He matches. Look who else we found. Cosplay expert Amanda. I wouldn't be Ron Burgundy without her. What are you cosplaying? So this is Chitara. Oh. It's a character from Thundercats from, you know, the 80s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I really enjoy doing uh, kind of classic cartoons. And this one has been on my list for a really long time. The wig especially was a little tricky. It's got a bit of body paint happening, so that took a <laughs> while. And then fingernails or the claws. Oh my gosh, things, that looks you know. dangerous. <laughs> oh, they're not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> How you feeling wearing that right now? Oh, it's fun. I uh, am very happy to be indoors in the air conditioning. Yep. <laughs> wigs are hot. Yes, yes, I've wigs can definitely be a, hot. <laughs> as a non-wig wearer, so. Just talk about the whole vibe of this place. It's a very positive and happy and creative atmosphere, and people are excited to be here. They're excited to be in cosplay. They're excited to look at all of the, the neat stuff that the yeah. vendors have. It's like a big family reunion. It is, it? So. It, yes, it is. But a family you want to go see. <laughs> what is nerd creativity? I mean, it's just applying your creativity to nerdy sorts of things. You get ideas and you can just like feel the energy from uh, people that are making things that they love. You know, I feel like it comes from a passion I enjoy it, and uh, I think a lot of other people enjoy it, and I think now, you know, it's more celebrated than it, than it has been in the past. When you get to be around your tribe, it just really helps you feel like, okay, yeah, this is great. There are other people that are like me. We're all kind of, you know, weird oddballs. So did we pull this off? Oh, I think it's great. <laughs> 
do people know? It's, yes, That's I've been great. bombarded with movie lines. I love it. It's it's been funny. So do you understand then like part of the draw of cosplay? It's it's fun getting that sort of interaction from people. It is. I, I guess I didn't really think about it that way, but yeah, people are shouting out like Anchorman lines oh, yeah. and stuff like that. So <laughs> it's it is kind of fun. It's part of why I like it. Yeah. <laughs> And that's where our story ends. We discovered a lot of nerd creativity. And just maybe, a nerdy host discovered his true self. You stay classy, Nebraska. I'm Mike Tobias. <laughs> <laughs>